lofty and high, having become so much better than angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. In other words, God spoke in various times, even though he spoke in present pertaining to things of another time. Because he is eternal. Amen. Go to First Peter 1. Hallelujah. First Pete 1. Verse 20. Let's see. Hallelujah. Would you read it with me? He was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. In other words, God was manifested at a specific time in this realm for me and you. Why? Oh, because he came to stop time for me and you. Does everybody got it? <laughs> he came into the realm. He says, oh, man, things are going bad. If I don't get in there, I got to stop this. The only way God could stop it is to come in and stop prophetic time so he actually came to stop time the prophetic time the prophetic judgment of time he came to stop and to fulfill the prophetic timeline amen with a time limitation and set things back in order because things were out of order and he came to stop the judgment of time and set things in order or he would have lost mankind because mankind was bound by time. Just like Noah. See, time had to continue, didn't it? But God convinced Noah to build a boat and rescue his family. But time still continued, didn't it? And all the, everybody on the earth died because God didn't come in and stop it, did he? But he did come in and stop it to fulfill a prophetic timeline of prophecy with a time limitation, all prepared by the timetable to keep unity in the movement of life and stop the judgment of time and rescue his man, mankind and produce his own offspring. And then time will restart again when tribulation, when the body of Christ or tribulation starts and the judgment and the body of Christ is removed. So everybody got it. So tribulation will start again. And we may be here for the starting of the tribulation of the three and a half years. Are you listening? Because when the body of Christ is removed, then that will start great tribulation. And it will be the ending of the tribulation. Is everybody Okay. Praise God. Acts 17. Acts 17. Now, I don't care if we leave in the beginning of the seven years or in the middle of the seven years, as long as we leave. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says we are not accounted for the wrath of God. Amen. Amen. 
What did I say to go to AX? AX 17. Is everybody okay? I know this sounds strange. But the purpose of this is to remove us from the bondage of time. It's to remove us from constantly looking at things in a tangible aspect and begin to go beyond it. That you are pressing through time to reach the timeless zone of eternity. So don't be entangled. In Acts 17, and uh, hallelujah, verse 26. And it says, And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed what? Times and boundaries of their dwellings so that they should what? Seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him... We live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offsprings. Hallelujah. Glory. I want to go to Romans 8. <laughs> Woohoo! Romans 8. Is everybody there? In 18. Read it with me. For I cons consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Yes, a timeless. Timeless zone of eternity. We are a timeless generation. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who was subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God, which is us, the offspring, the timeless children. <clears throat> For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth, pain, birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in his hope, but hope that is seen is not a hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? Hello. For what he sees. In other words, God is trying to remove us from the tangibility of time and help us to press through to a timeless zone of eternity. But if we have hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings and cannot, cannot be uttered. In other words, are understood. So the Spirit is speaking from a timeless zone. Are you listening? In through me and you, and bringing those things that are timeless into a time zone, and warfaring in this time zone, and establishing eternal things in this time zone to help restrain the powers of darkness. Because only the things of God can restrain them. Your and my flesh cannot. Our intellect cannot. That's only the power and the presence of God that can restrain the powers of darkness. Is everybody okay? Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. 
for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren moreover whom he predestined these he also called whom he called these he also justified and whom he justified these he also glorified again i want to reiterate in the arena God is trying to untangle us from time. We are pressing through time to enter the timeless zone of eternity. Do not allow the enemy to entangle you with time. Don't let time work against you. Let it work for you. Use time correctly. Amen? Use time correctly. Don't waste time because there is the limitation, time's limitation, which is, means something must be completed in a certain period of time. And God gives you a season to walk in to change each and every one of us. And to train each and every one of us. Everybody's season is not the same. Your season is different than mine. Your season is different than the person sitting next to you. Everybody has different seasons. Amen. And the purpose of these seasons is to create the character of Christ in us and through us. And help us and train us. Constantly severing ourselves. From the entanglements of time. Amen. Well now time's running out. So we got. <laughs> There's a lot more I have. But I think that's sufficient. Grab hold of this. Do not let anything prevent you. From pressing through time. Press through. Don't go back. Don't try to fix. Hello. We have a tendency to try to fix everything. Don't try to fix it. Let it go. And press forward. And press through time. And let God allow your seasons to be established. And count it all joy as you go through them. Amen. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I ask that the seed be protected by the blood of the Lamb. And it would grow and bear fruit for your glory. And as we go through these seasons, then we have more of an understanding that it's not always something that we have done, but it's something that you've done. <laughs> and bringing us a change to walk in your image and likeness and character. And that you could express yourself more and more through us. That others who are bound by time will see a timeless offspring. And bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed.